Hello. It's been a little bit of time since I did an ASMR video, um, but I'm feeling called to share some some energy with you that's more calming. There's been a lot of rage, I would say, <laughs> and anger and sadness in my life coming up kind of like old emotions that my body has been holding onto for me for a long time and in developing more of a relationship with my body and how I want to treat my body and respect it more and love it more um, my body has been giving me back these emotions that it's stored for me in the past and that's involved, yeah, a lot of rage, sadness, anger, things like that. And it's kind of like a fire in a cauldron or just a fire burning really bright. But underneath that, which in its own way is beautiful and truthful and Full of passion, but is destructive. Fire destroys, right? It also creates. But more often it destroys. And with that space comes probably a lot of regret um, when we share words of anger with people when we become so enraged by them that we are bound to them one of the best things we can be reminded of is this chalice of water calm water that I'm trying to represent for you here and now in my voice, in my speaking, in my calm steadiness that is what is underneath the surface of this fire, of this rage and when we can no longer go through the fires of rage and no longer forget that this calm still water resides underneath when we can go through the fires of rage and we can feel that this calm under the surface is, exists then we are actively alchemicalizing these parts of us that are to be transformed and when we do that, when we transform rage, anger, fear, sadness into creativity, into understanding, love, respect, we are that calm water that rests underneath the fire and we're both at the same time and in this way we're closer to our soul and we're able to transcend a lot of the pain that we feel in ourself by being close to our soul your soul is something you feel it's not necessarily something you can look for it's there and yet it's not there and if you don't believe in having a soul maybe you can't find it 
then the closest thing to that is love to understand it more properly love is understanding love is non-judgment when we understand something we might not understand all parts of it but with non-judgment we understand it enough not to judge it i.e. we understand that part of what we judge in something or someone else lives inside of us as well somehow in some way or is a reflection of what we have been or could be and even though that thing that you judge might not live inside of you there is something that lives inside of you that another will judge or could judge especially if you judge others when you understand that life other people are different from you yet they live in very similar ways to you life is constantly reflecting parts of you back to yourself if you're willing to see it or surrender to it Are you willing to surrender to the parts of you that are being reflected to you in your life? They may trigger you into rage or pain or fear or sadness. But this reflection is for you to understand and let go of judgment toward because when you let go of judgment towards yourself or something else ultimately you forgive you forgive it or you're not bonded to it you release it I think the only righteous judgment there's only two kinds one is maybe there's only one kind And that is from your subjective self. Righteous judgment is something that creates a boundary between you and something else so that you don't go too far as to want to try it, want to be it yourself. There is a thin line between understanding and merging with something you might understand someone enough that you start to merge with them start to believe that they are like you and that you are like them but actually <laughs> what's happening is you feel good with a part of them Maybe it's a release from yourself, from your sorrow, perhaps. Maybe their playfulness reminds you of the part of you that you've forgotten. But instead of finding that playfulness inside of you, you merge with somebody else. And your thoughts become, or their thoughts become your thoughts. Their words become your words. And this is... This is leaning too far into understanding. Righteous judgment helps you have a boundary. It's not where you are really judging the person. You're judging yourself and who you are. And 
we can convince ourselves we're something else than what we are, especially if we resonate with something or someone in front of us that makes us feel good. But that good feeling is arising from a place that wants to reach that good feeling in its own way. If you take that good feeling and you try to replicate it by replicating that person's thoughts or feelings, after a while, you won't know who you are because you're using someone else's map. We're here to take that sorrow and transform it into creativity and creativity creates all things new. The ultimate sorrow for a soul is to have not paved a new path for itself to walk and others after it. The ultimate sorrow is to have walked only on the path that others have paved for you, i.e. no creativity, only acceptance of what is. So. That's the other side of the coin. You're not to understand everything so as to merge with it. You're to understand and forgive yourself for what comes up for you and to be able to differentiate between the deepest aspects of your soul and between the things that you're aiming for that others remind you of. But... They aren't the path. The path is paved by you. And the internal work that you do or don't do. I've been reading a lot of books recently. And a lot of what I'm saying is little pieces of wisdom that have lit me up in a moment of fear or pain or anger or sadness. And this is my way of being creative with those things. Yes, they've been inspired by something or someone else, but here I sit with you now, I haven't clung to those ideas, I haven't necessarily held on to them specifically. Instead, I, I sit here before you because I want to clear up some of those messages for myself. And in the middle of those words of wisdom that I've somehow sparked, ignited my soul in some small way or big way, I want to hear the, the voice of my soul that directs those thoughts into speech that I can understand, maybe some of you can understand, and then you take that information and you create something new with it as well. We're here to inspire each other for sure. <laughs> so when I say don't merge, I'm not saying withdraw. You can partake instead which is to both understand and forgive and have a boundary between you and your soul and other people's soul. I bet you didn't know that you should have a boundary between your soul and other people's soul, right? Well, to an extent you should. Because, again, the deepest sorrow that we feel as human beings is to walk a path that has already been paved for us. Might not sound so sorrowful, <laughs> but to the soul it is. The soul is here to create all things new. That doesn't mean that you have to create everything new all day, every day. That would be... Impossible, probably. 
but it does mean that you walk a path that is created by yourself and your soul as often as possible. And how do you get to the, the, the self, the soul, the love that you are? You keep transforming those powers of rage and anger and sadness and jealousy. Instead of using them, making them become you and who you are, you transform them and create something new with them. That is why we are ever burdened with the pain of what it means to be human and divine at the same time. Because without that pain, we wouldn't have the alchemical gold. I know that this is all metaphors and it speaks to the subconscious mind. As for practical steps that you can take, what about five things? Choose five things that you can do in the next five minutes. Pray, dance, sing, laugh. Cry. Call someone. Whatever it is, you choose what your soul wants to do next. And even if it's not what your soul wants to do, that's okay. When we make mistakes, we learn how to make things right. And if we didn't make mistakes, well, we wouldn't be human. <laughs>